Okay, so welcome. I'm really glad that everyone is here. Thank you for being here. Um, let's see, today we're going to talk about varied contour. And um, this might seem like a simple subject, but it actually can be very challenging. It's also a really great skill to have and practice. So all I mean by varied contour is contour is when you draw the outline of something, right? And we're not practicing shading or anything like that. You're just um, representing or showing the object in more or less its outline. So when the line is the same all the time, it can be a little bit flat or boring to look at. It can also be a little bit boring to draw, honestly. So today we're going to work on varying our line. And it can also be called line quality. So the quality of your line or the kind of line you use can tell all kinds of things. And what we'll focus on today is using our line to show light and dark or like uh, values, right? So uh, it'll be pretty straightforward practice. And I prepared just um, an image that we can work from. And then later on, you can work um, on your own from this. So let me see. I want to show you a couple of images because it can be hard to understand exactly what I'm talking about, right? Sort of an abstract concept until you see and do it for yourself. So I'm just going to uh, show my screen to you, share my screen, sorry. And um, I'm going to give you just a couple examples of what I'm talking about in this varied contour. So here's a drawing of an ear. Um, I think it's an early 20th century French drawing. And it's really beautiful. So they've actually d used um, some lines, like for shaded, some hatching lines. But see how the, the line varies? Here it's thinner, here it's thicker. Right? Just a little hint of this thick line lets us understand that this is in shadow or it's sort of going inside, right? This is on top and this is behind. So, and there are also places where there is no line, right? It's not outlining everything in the same way. See how the line here is broken and it gets thin and then thick and then stops. Right, so these are so. This is a really beautiful example of um, a very contour drawing. Now here it's a foliage. Now in this drawing here on the right, the line is kind of the same all over. It's a beautiful drawing, but it's not the kind of drawing that we want to focus on today. So this drawing on the left, it might be a little bit difficult to see. I'm changing the um, light on my screen now. See here in this case, what they did as a conscious choice, this artist, where these lines intersect, right? The, the vertical and horizontal lines. They made that darker and thicker line. And then they left this sort of lighter and broken. Right? This is really beautiful. You see the line here? I can zoom in a little bit, I think. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Um, how it's dark and then goes light again. So this is a really nice example. I'll just show you one last example. Um, I think this is a beautiful example as well. This is um, by Toulouse-Lautrec. Um, not only is this a great composition, right? Everything is pointing for us to look at the face, but it's outlined by these sort of dark lines. And here's the shadow sort of under the, the bed. Um, and then he not only outlined everything, but he also gave us these hints of, right, folds. Here, folds. So contour doesn't always have to mean just the outline. You can also indicate things that are happening inside, right? It doesn't have to just be outline. Okay. 
So before we start our own drawing to experiment with varying our contour line, I just want to tell you a few things that can be helpful. And the first thing is about pencils and um, pencil um, weights. So like I have some of these pencils that have letters on them, right? This is a B and this one, for example, says 2H. So H are, you can just remember it, they're harder pencils. And that just means they'll, they'll make a much lighter mark. And the Bs become softer. So it could be HB, and then the next softest is B, 2B, 3, 4, 5. They usually go all the way to 9B. So the softer the pencil, or the higher the B weight, the sort of darker and softer the line will be. So this can be really helpful in your contour drawings as well. So where you want it to be light, you can use a lighter pencil or a harder pencil, an H. And where you want it to be dark, you can go with the softer pencil. Now, if you only have one pencil, that's totally fine. It does not matter. You can just control how hard you press. And also something that can control the light and darkness of a line is how fast you go. So if you slow down and push uh, harder with a little more weight, that will make your line darker and wider. Right? If you go faster, it will be lighter and a little bit thinner, possibly, not necessarily. Now, some variations in lines can be broken lines, like where it's not a continuous line, it sort of has a a place where you lift up the pencil and then continue on with your line again. So you can be drawing, lift, and then draw again. Um, one thing is you can use dots. One thing is you can just not draw in places at all, right? Especially where the light is coming from. You can leave that very, very light or leave no line at all. Now, let me think if there's, I think that's, a good place to start. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, put an image of a still life, a small still life that I took a photograph of, and we're going to practice just varying our lines. So what I would suggest is um, now you don't have to draw the entire thing. I think it has three or four objects. You could just zoom in on one area it can, uh, or you could just pick one object. That's completely up to you and what you feel comfortable with. Um, we'll just have about five minutes to work on this. So don't feel like you have to get the whole thing done or in, right? You just want to maybe focus on one area or object and varying the light and dark. So where the light is, go lighter with your pencil. And where, the, where it becomes dark, right? try and think about making your line sadder, darker, heavier, and just experiment with this and see what happens, right? So one thing is you might want to start by uh, making just a really loose sketch light outline of the portion of the still life that you're going to draw or the whole thing. And then go back and make some conscious decisions about where can I, you know, show this darker portion. Okay. So those are the instructions for before we start. But does anyone have any questions or you know, comments, anything that you want to know? Maybe it's not clear. OK. So I'm going to share my screen with you, which means that I won't be able to see the chat box. But if you have any questions or want to interrupt at any time, just turn on your microphone. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, I'm going to work with this still life that I set up from my morning tea. Um, so, what we'll do is I'm going to set the timer for five minutes and we'll just experiment right and so think about where you can leave a light line and where can you go darker okay let's start and see what happens
Okay, we just have about 30 seconds left. Don't worry if you're not finished. Okay, and stop. Okay, so how did it go? What happened? I'm very curious. Does anybody want to share? Even if you don't want to share your drawing, just insights or questions, what you noticed, learned, was this challenging? Was it fun? I'll Kelly, I'll speak up. Oh, good. <laughs> I'll speed. Oh, okay. okay. Who is that? That was Marsha, and this is Lucy. Okay, so one of you share first. Okay, I don't know that I want to show my drawing, but I found it hard, difficult to know where to make dark line. I mean, I could see where it was dark, but I didn't know whether making the line. Anyway, it was difficult. I can share my drawing. How's that? Okay, sure. That would help us see. You. Yeah. Let me see. Can you turn on your camera? Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Um, sorry, I'm trying to find you. Uh, I cannot find you. Okay. Your screen? Uh, yes, I see you on the screen. Can you hold up your drawing? Okay, I pressed something I shouldn't have. No, okay. it's fine. Here's, here's my drawing. Like, you need to hold your drawing higher, we can't see it. Yeah, okay. could you lean it the top forward a little bit just because okay. it's hard? Wow, that's beautiful. That's really nice. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, so you put in the cast shadows, right? But you didn't even need to. Like, the line where the um, edge of the paper towel is, you know, meeting the shadow, that's really nice. Like, even without filling in the shadows, you understand where the light and the dark is. Like, you understand where the light is coming from. I think it's really nice. Oh. It seems like you understood it perfectly well, actually. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Your Thanks. turn, Marsha. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess I, I, I have a similar experience to Lucy where I found it difficult, but as I kept going back, kind of looking for darker spaces, I noticed a few more in there, but wasn't sure how to depict them by line, such as the, I'll put it up, the fold. I did the paper towel too, such as I noticed more of a fold in the drape of the paper towel. And I thought about shading, but didn't quite know what to do about line. So anyway, this is. Yeah, so it's really nice. The line is great. Like you don't even need to, to actually fill in the shadow right past the table. That's really nice. Right, so yeah, the, it's great how the great like there's the fold in here. You know, I was seeing that. And so what, what I was I didn't know other than shading would do about that. Yeah, so this is great. I think that the lines describe it perfectly well. Um, it kind of, oh, can everyone hear okay? Or are pe somebody says they're having trouble hearing. Yeah, so, Great. Yeah, that's great, Marcia. Now, I'd say, um, 
next time try it without even having to um, shade in where the cast shadows are. Okay. Thank you. Turning someone's camera, which is we have an idea that if we don't describe everything, that people aren't going to understand our drawing, right? Like we're not going to know if they understand what they're looking at. So this is an important thing to keep in mind, right? Uh, our drawings don't have to be photographs, and they don't have to exactly represent. Um, to the letter of the law, the thing that it is we're drawing. So a drawing is an interpretation of something, right? And it can be abstract, but in this case, we're working from observation. So I would say, I know it's maybe a challenge, but as best as you can, let go just for now that the, of the idea that you have to explain what your drawing is exactly in terms of an, a recognizable object. So this is sort of an experimentation in um, varying our lines and we're using light and shadow as a clear way, right, to vary the lines. It's not the only way. I mean, um, right, we can use light and uh, heavy lines in all different ways, but this is an easy and um, kind of straightforward way to practice varying light and dark lines. Um, let's see, somebody said they're having audio problems. Can everyone hear me okay? Okay, okay, okay great, thanks for letting me know. So, um, Connie, let's see, Connie said, I feel like my, um, I feel like my lines all look the same. I know they don't, but it was tricky to think about. Yeah, so, right, just it's um, just when you try something new, it's always a little bit awkward or it can feel self-conscious or, you know, kind of forced. But I would say also try um, leaving places with no lines at all. And one thing is you can go back if you're working in pencil and erase. So you can experiment with if you have no line and then a medium weight or a light line that goes into a dark line. What does that look like? And how does that describe a space? Um, Catherine says she doesn't have a working camera to share. It's a tricky combination to be working line and shadow at the same time. Yeah, so <clears throat> a line can be very expressive. And if you look at any of Matisse or Picasso's drawings, line drawings, they're very expressive. Not only do they show shadow, they show movement. Um, they have a feeling associated with them, like a mood. Right, so actually, there's a lot available to us in just a line. So. It's something that takes a lot of thought um, and practice and experimentation, right? Just like anything, it's not always going to work out. Right? So we learn by when it doesn't work and when it does work. Okay, so I'd say let's try it again. And for anyone who wants, you and has like a marker or colored pencil or a crown or any other kind of um, instrument, you can always use that, right? I can vary the thickness like uh, with a colored pencil, you can back over it, right? Or you can, uh, in pencil, sorry, I'm going to turn my video off for a second. Okay, so somebody said the video is frozen. Can you see me again? Okay. Oh, sorry, technical problems. Okay, yeah. so we're going to try it again. Now you can draw the same thing also with a pencil, or you can pick a different object or frame your drawing in a different way. That's entirely up to you. 
Um, but what I thank you for letting me know. Now you can see me. Okay, thanks for keeping me updated about the the technical status of the video. I'm sorry for um, technical problems. So let's try it one more time and think about where can you make no line or erase your line completely, and where can you make it light and then go into dark. And try not to shade in at all, right? Just stick with lines. Now you can use lines on the inside, but stay away from shading. And remember, we don't always have to uh, communicate exactly what it is we're drawing. So just focus on your drawing and see what happens. Just be open to trying something new. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again with the same still life. And we'll have five minutes again and see what happens. Okay, ready and start.
Okay, I just have about 30 seconds. Okay, and stop. Okay, great. How did it go? Let's see. I'll try and show you mine, but you know, the light in here is it. I just did the paper towel thing because it seemed to have the most interesting shapes to it. So does anybody want to share even just um, insights, comments, questions? Like, what did you learn from this? Was it challenging? It became oh, sure. very abstract. So, who, who is that? Who's speaking? I think it was two of us. Uh, that's Marsha okay. P. This is Karen. Okay. Marsha P., do you want to go <clears throat> first? I just wanted to say it's much more abstract this way. Yeah, so was it hard to think in an abstract way or was it fun or what did you think about that? Oh, it was a lot of fun, but I had to kind of hold myself back because I'm so into the detail all the time. So it's a really good exercise for me. Oh, yeah, right. So this is about seeing kind of the larger shape. Yes. Right? When you just on the outline or the contour. Yes, more about shapes. Okay, cool. Great. Thanks for sharing. Who were the other? Yeah, right. Because well, especially in this case, like the shapes were sort of what were interesting about about this little competition. <laughs> there somebody else who, yeah, here's, here's one Here's, I thought it was, I did a better job this time when I kind of loosened up and just sort of like held the pencil differently and just didn't try to capture the exact image, you know, so exactly, I should say. So this is. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Well, I don't know about beautiful, but that kind of looks like a Matisse order mine. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh -huh. um, like the New Yorker illustration. Yeah, that's really cool. So, yeah, what did you get out of doing this? And how exactly did you hold your pencil differently? Out of curiosity. Uh, what I did was I held it on the side more i don't know where my there we are you know like i don't know where the camera is there it is it's to your left yeah and sometimes to get a finer line that way so it was kind of good to alternate it i found so yeah that, that's great that's the difference yeah, in the holding, technique. yeah that can make a huge difference right holding your pencil in a different position okay thank you that's great Okay, Connie, hi Connie. Hey, I tried using a pen. I have like a little paintbrush, like pen. And it was oh, yes. Pen. Oh, fabulous. Yes. I didn't, I didn't worry about accuracy and I went kind of fast so the lines would be more, I don't know, flowing. Yes, it's really nice in places where it's broken yeah. as well. <clears throat> You get a sense of light. And then like under the plate where it's that really dark, right? You understand that that's a really heavy shadow. Yeah. That's very nice. Thank you. Yeah. So what did you think about this exercise? Okay. So let's see. Diane says, hello. Sorry, let me. Okay, Diane says um, that she does not have a, a camera. Okay, focusing on breadth of lines and breaking them while using a marker made it easier to make the lines darker or lighter. 
Yeah, so sometimes we're afraid to use things like pens and markers because they're sort of bold and very permanent, right? You can't, um, you can't really be timid and you can't take your line back. So it's actually a nice thing to try. Um, and maybe there's a paradox of freedom in this sort of, you know, unwieldy instrument. That's a really nice observation. So yeah, trying a marker can actually be really nice way to draw and remember that's how we drew as kids <laughs> like we drew with we didn't have any hesitation about drawing with markers um oh and Catherine says to you Karen that um your drawing is lovely and a really nice line a broken line in the pen yeah the broken line actually is a very effective tool right for sort of spacing out your drawing and give it and it's like it gives it a a balance in a way. When the line is the same all over, sometimes we don't know where to look. So when we vary our line, especially breaking it and leaving some wide of the paper, your brain also fills in the information. Okay, great. Does anybody else want to share? Okay. Well, that was it for today. Um, we could do one more, but, um, or how about, um, I'll stay on the line. I'm going to end the recording.